here, I've got just two rectangle splines. And I'm going to render these. And as you can see, you don't really see anything except for these, well, two really thin lines. And I already applied um, some redshift uh, text to it and set the curve to hair strains. But now let's set this to, let's say, boxes. And let's bring up the thickness to 40 or something. Then we get this. And if we set it to cylinders, it's roundish. It's not really round. Actually, it's also um, a rectangle. But uh, in the shading, you can see that uh, the fong angle is, is pretty high. There's a, a, a lot of smoothing going on. Um, but for boxes, it's working really well. Now let's create a redshift material for that. So let's go to redshift, materials, material, and assign this to both. And maybe let's set it to iron. So the cool thing about this is that you can now add all of the effects that you would love to add to like real geometry. For example, what you can do in order to smoothen the curves or to, to create at least some bevel here is you could add the round corners node and just type this into the overall thumb. And now if we crank this up a little bit, you can see that we are getting these nice um, uh, speculars, uh, these nice highlights on the on the edges. And also, you could add a noise. Let's go with the next on noise and let's set it to something like uh, Luca. Where is it? Here we go. Let's output this directly. So here we go. You can see that this is also working and now we could use this for example, in the reflection roughness and so on. So we can create really cool materials here. And if the profile is really simple, we can just use um, this technique um, in order to like, sweep uh, some splines. That's very cool because it's so, I, I'd imagine that this is much more lightweight than having multiple objects and multiple splines and and then like essentially the same material, you know? Yeah, that's that's true, but it's there's always a downside. Um, of course, it's not as controllable. Mm -hmm. And yeah, in my previous test, there was also some texture stretching here um, when it was set to adaptive. And then I, um, I countered that by um, using uniform as the intermediate points mode for okay. the splines, but right now it's working. Okay, yeah, that's that's everything I wanted to add. If you were to adjust like the tiles V, then would we see that reflected? Oh, that that maybe let me like you know like where are the UVs, right? Are there UVs? Let's have a look. Oh. Well, it's not it's not too different actually. Oh yeah, yes, so there... yes it is. Here we go. That's that's what I had before. So, and what we can do about this, at least it worked. And the other example was when I set this to uniform, you get this. And now what we can do is, uh, yeah, we can use the scale parameters here. Yeah. And adjust the tiling, so to speak. All right, so let me set this to four. And here we go, that's maybe five. That's looking much better. And now, yeah, we can use this in the... Um, Perfect. In the roughness. Yeah, and now if we just, yeah, bring those two colors a little bit closer together, we can reduce the contrast in the, in the roughness map, in the roughness noise. That's and so, so on. And yeah, now you can see that we've got some resolution problems here. It's not dense enough, so we can simply bring up the number of intermediate points here, let's say to 
32, and now you can see that it's round again. That's All awesome. Right. Thanks, Jonas. That's, that's pretty much it. That's everything I wanted to show.